Okay, so here we have a P1 paper, Pure One Maths from the International A Level Syllabus, not the um, paper one from the um, British A Level Syllabus, this is from the International IAL Syllabus, Pure Maths P1 paper. Um, this is a sample assessment paper that was um, issued by the um, examining board uh, to give you an idea of what type of questions would come up in this new syllabus. So I'm going to be going through this paper within the next couple of days. Um, here we have um, question number one, which is all about um, differentiation and integration. Okay, so for question number one, part A, we're asked to differentiate this expression that's been given to us. We've got y equals um, 4x cubed minus 5x, 5 over x squared and of course, x can't be zero, the one will be undefined, the denominator will be zero. Find in the simplest form a dy dx. So first of all, let's find dy dx. Now first of all, before we can find dy dx, we have to get this thing ready and prepared to be differentiated. Okay, so you have 4x cubed minus, and for something to be um, ready to be differentiated, the, um, the x's, the variables, whatever, should be on top. They should be on the numerator. So this 5 over x squared should be expressed with x on the numerator. So this will be 5 times x to the power of minus 2, using the fact that we have uh, index law that a to the power of minus m is the same as 1 over a to the power of m. So reciprocal negative power just makes it reciprocal. So 1 over x squared is the same as x to the power of minus 2. So this becomes minus 5 times x to the power of minus 2. And then we can differentiate. So once we start to differentiate, that's when you write dy dx. Do not write dy dx at this stage here. Some people think writing dy dx means, oh, okay, I've started differentiating or, you know, this is the answer now. No, you, you have to write dy dx once you've started to differentiate, not before you've started to differentiate. Here, we didn't differentiate, we just got this ready, prepared it to be differentiated, and now it's time to differentiate it. So here we got 4x cubed, when you differentiate, you multiply by the power. So you have 3 times 4, which is 12. So you have 12x, and then you take 1 from the power, so that becomes squared. And here you have minus 2 times minus 5, which is plus 10. And then you take 1 from the power, and you take 1 from minus 2, you get minus 3. And there's your answer. You can leave it like that if you wish, or if you want to, you can write it back in this form. And here we have the answer. Either of these two are acceptable. Okay, writing in this form is probably better when you have another part where you have to uh, substitute values in to find the gradient at certain points or whatever. But uh, this is perfectly fine to leave it this way. Now, part B, we have to integrate it. So now we've got the integral of y. Now, some people think, oh, we've got to integrate um, this. <laughs> You know, we're going to integrate the answer we just got. No, we don't integrate with the answer. It's saying integrate y. It doesn't say integrate dy dx. That would be a bit pointless. You'd be going backwards. So now we're going to integrate y. We're going to integrate the original equation given to us, which is already prepared for us for integration. You prepare things for integration in the same way. You write, write the powers on the numerator. But don't forget to put dx and have these both in brackets. So like one bracket so that you're saying that basically you're integrating what's ever in this bracket with respect to x. You write it in a bracket when they're separate terms. If it was just one term, uh, you don't write it in bracket. You don't put the bracket there. The bracket is to show that the dx refers to both of those things. So now we have to just simply integrate, which is the reverse um, or the inverse of differentiating. So instead of um, multiplying by the power and then um, taking one from the power, you add to the power, so you're going to 4x to the power 4, and then you divide by the new power. So you're doing the reverse operations and in the reverse order. Okay, so you deal with the power first, adding to the power, and then dividing by the power. With differentiation, you first multiply the power, and then you take one from the power. So here you're going to have minus 5x. Now, if you add 1 to minus 2, you get minus 1. So you have to divide by minus 1. And with integration, you have to always make sure that you put your plus c at the end because remember it's the opposite of differentiating if you had a constant if there was a constant that you differentiated for example if there was a constant like uh, say um, you know 3 or 4 10 whatever it is and you differentiate that it becomes zero so it's possible that 
before this was um, diff differentiated, there was a, um, a constant there, okay, which disappeared. So it's possible for there to be a, a value, a number that would be at the end of this. Okay, so you have to be careful. And now we're just going to simplify this to make it you know, proper answer. So now 4x divided by 4 gives you x. So you got x to the power 4 minus divided by minus is plus. And you've got 5x to the power of minus 1 plus c. Or if you want to, as I said, you could write this with the x and the denominator. So 5 over x plus 1 plus, that's what I put 1, plus c, sorry, not 1 plus C. Okay, and there we have our answer. Either of these two are perfectly acceptable answers. As I said, this is probably better if you have to then work out some, uh, you know, values as, you know, find <coughs> the equation of the curve, for example, and they gave you a point on the curve, then you'd have to put in the values of X in there to find out what C is and so on. So this is probably easy when you have to substitute next into it. Otherwise, both of them are perfectly fine. And that's the end of question number one.